Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Rolling Road, specifically round two of the We Mazda Be Crazy leaderboard. Today's round, we'll see the second version of the NA MX-5, or the NA-2, as I like to call it. Or as I'm going to be calling it on and off throughout this episode, Closed-Minded Phil. Yes, we had Airhead Phil yesterday. Meet his closed-minded brother. 128 horsepower, 110 foot-pounds of torque, about 2,300 pounds in weight. You can convert that to kilos in your own time. We're going to be covering the same 11 tracks that we covered yesterday. This time in the hope of maybe even bettering the times that Airhead Phil set yesterday. Let's see what happens. So, track one of round two saw us back at Suzuka. And as I was driving this car, it dawned upon me that this car is... It's unusual. It's got two character traits that I find worrying. It's a hard top convertible, which means in some degrees, and this is why I'm going to be calling it closed minded Phil, it's closed minded. And the longer I kept my foot on the throttle, the less power the car had. So it's kind of sort of like the current US president. That said, cheap jokes aside, the lap time that the NA2 had to beat was a 2 minutes 56.487 seconds. This was a time set by the NA1 yesterday. The NA2 did it in a time of 2 minutes 55.023 seconds, which makes it about uh, math. 1.464 seconds faster than the NA1 by my mathematics. Yeah, this car was weird to drive around Suzuka, and I think part of it was the additional weight, mainly for the hardtop, which also actually made the car very, very tail happy through some sections. You saw earlier through a couple of turns, the massive, massive slides that the car had, and... Uh, I don't know. And that thing where I said that the longer I kept my foot on the throttle, the more underpowered the car felt? Yeah. Take my advice if you own one of these things and you want to take it to a track. Try and keep the rev needle anywhere between 4.5 to 5.5 thousand RPM. That's where the power sort of peaks. Anywhere over 5,500 RPM, yeah, yeah, you're really going to be pushing the car to limits that it should never, never have considered reaching. It was just so gutless. Anywhere after 5,500 RPM. This engine was not designed to have a 7,000 RPM redline. So what Mazda thought they were doing by increasing the red line from 6.5 to 7,000 RPM, I couldn't tell you. Anyways, on to the next track. Well, another track, another lap. This time we were back at the Yas Marina North Corkscrew. And again, this car just felt so unbelievably gutless anywhere after 5,500 RPM. It really, seriously, this thing struggles to get to its 7,000 RPM red line. It's not even funny, actually, how much this thing struggles to get to its 7,000 RPM red line. That said, the time it had to beat was a 116.799 seconds. The NA2 did it in a time of 1 minute. 15.573 seconds, which makes it 1.426 seconds quicker than the NA2. 1.4 seconds, basically. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't expecting that big a gap. 
But at the same time, and I don't know why, but there was a bit of me that was expecting a bigger split time between the NA1 and the NA2. Oh well. Beggars can't be choosers. So, here we are. Track number four. Maple Valley. One of my favourite tracks in Forza Motorsport 7. And... I'm not gonna lie... The NA2 handled Maple Valley surprisingly well. There is a three-parter uphill section coming up, though, that really upset the car in relation to the car's lack of horsepower. But I know for a fact if I keep bitching about the car's lack of power, it's going to get old real quick. That said, the car had a lap time of 2 minutes 5.134 seconds to beat. The Mazda MX-5 NA2 did it in a time of 2 minutes, 0 point 0.344 seconds, which is about, well, that's nearly 5 seconds. 5 seconds! Jesus! I mean, I knew the 18 horsepower around this track, especially given the big downhill section towards the final turn. I knew that was going to do something. I didn't expect it would do something that extravagant. What I also didn't expect was the rather extravagant spin that we had at the end of lap 3, which we will show after this lap has finished. All told, however, though, joking aside, this car, once again, was a barrel of laughs to drive around Maple Valley. It really honestly was. Lack of power be damned, this car handled Maple Valley really, really well. 10 out of 10 would do again. So speaking of the crash, here it comes. This was on the car's third and final lap. This was on the run up to the big downhill section where we got up to 123 miles per hour out of the car. And then as you'll see, the back end decided to step out. Just, yeah, don't ask. Track number 5 of the We Mazda Be Crazy Championship Gutless Bastard Edition saw us at Hockenheim. Again, ignore the wide turn. I was really pushing this car. Don't know why I was pushing the car that hard on the first lap, but oh well. This car... Ignore my phone, I do apologise. This car was... Uh... It was neither here or there around this track. I mean, it tried, it really wanted it, but everything else just went no. And so the car somewhat disappointingly just had to sit there and go, okay. That said, the lap time it had to beat was a 2 minutes 2.015 seconds. The NA2 did it in a lap time of, on this its second lap, 1 minute 57.086. So once again, another near 5 second split. I don't know where this car is pulling the 5 second split time differences from, but... I don't know, yeah. Apologies to that cameraman on that corner as well, I think I pretty much wiped his legs out for six. Sorry bro. But yeah, I... Uh, it wanted to... I know this car wanted to go quicker around this track. The fact that it's actually showing some willing five tracks in... Well, that's got to be a good sign, surely.
track number six saw us back at the Virginia International Speedway. Speedway? Raceway. I can name. Shut up. Anyways, this car actually handled this track surprisingly well, especially the two off-road sections. It honestly handled the two off-road sections a lot better than I originally anticipated. And here's the weird thing as well, power-wise, the car felt right at home on this track. Which is completely and utterly bizarre, but oh well, if it worked around Maple Valley, I'm failing to see why it didn't work around here. But it did work, so I need not panic. Anyways, the lap time it had to beat was a 1 minute 36.625 seconds. The NA2 did a lap time of 1 minute 30... Six point two eight nine seconds on this its third lap where as you just saw the car awkwardly stalled on the second off-road section although to be fair I'd much rather it stall than have what happened on the second lap which we will cover in a little bit still Swings and roundabouts. Now, I will admit, lap 2 around Virginia International Raceway didn't go very well for me. For starters, as we enter the first off-road section, the back end stepped out. Then I missed my braking point and I clipped that tyre bundle. But it's the next off-road section that really screwed over the second lap. Watch this. We merge on. I rip the handbrake. And I overshoot. I overshot where I was supposed to go and, well, unhappy with this. I gave myself a 5 second penalty, because I'm a Muppet. Silver liner though was that I did pull off a sick J-turn. Granted after revving the nuts off the reverse gear, but oh well, beggars choosers and the like. You know what, something's not right about this picture. I, I, I don't know what it is, is it, is it, is it the end game lens flare? I don't think it's the in-game lens flare. I don't think it's the suit that my guy is wearing. Ah, oh, yeah. I now know what it is. It's staring me right in the face. It's the fact that the game thought it funny to load Lime Rock and not stick with the NA2. Because call it a hunch, but that's the strangest looking Mazda MX-5 I think I've ever seen. Track number seven brought us back to Lime Rock, where the car performed surprisingly well, actually. This car performed a lot better around this track than I thought it was going to, especially through the chicane near the uphill section. Um, the lap time. Now, the lap time it had to beat was a 1 minute 11.8 eight one six seconds the na2 did it in a time of one minute nine point six three four seconds which is basically just over two seconds it works out to 2.1 something seconds i can't be bothered doing the maths the rolling road we're lazy bastards I digress, however. Yeah, basically, this car performed surprisingly well around the Lime Rock South Chicane formation. Definitely, it's not a 10 out of 10 would do it again, it's more like an 8 out of 10, but I would still recommend thrashing this car around this track. Well, I said I'd managed to spin on lap 3. This is lap 3, and as I say, someone please do explain to me how I pulled this one off. Answers on a postcard. I was in third gear, 
I was doing seven miles an hour after the back end of the car stepped out and I tried saving it and I still managed to spin it. Again, answers on a postcard as to how I pulled it off. Here we go. One, two, three, and four. That was at seven miles an hour. Four attempts at correcting it and I still managed to balls it up. Welcome to the rolling road. Cock-ups every day. Our final scheduled track for round two of the We Mazda Be Crazy Championship was the Mount Panorama Circuit at Bathurst, Australia. And as you'll probably see, closed-minded Phil really, really didn't like this track at all, or rather the track didn't like him. Because this car took a hell of a battering through some sections, particularly through the coaster, which is one of my favourite parts of the track. We found a wall which destroyed the rear right, uh, the rear right hand side light cluster. We found a tyre bundle which somehow did little to no damage to the front bumper. Then I spun, backed into a wall and that completely crippled the rear bumper in its entirety. Yeah, this car may be gutless but this track is heartless. It's... yeah, it's brutal. Anyways, the time it had to beat was a 2 minutes, 59.842 seconds. The NA2, or Gutless Bastards, as I'm going to be calling it for the rest of this, did it in a time of 2 minutes, 57.363 seconds on what you are currently watching, which is the car's third and final lap around Mount Panorama. So yeah, the gutless bastard around Bathurst. When it worked, it worked. When it didn't, it didn't. Uh, I mean, the car tried to its credit, and to be perfectly honest, that's all I can credit it for around this track. I... Uh, I know we're going to have better cars, but it's just a shame that the gutless bastard is so, well, gutless, I suppose. So, eh, whatever. It is what it is, as I said earlier. And last but by no means least, ladies and gentlemen, our bonus track, the Top Gear Aerodrome. Just like with the NA1, the Gutless Bastard was a very, very fun experience around this track. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. The lap time that the Gutless Bastard had to beat was a 134.306 seconds, and the Gutless Bastard coming up now to Chicago, did it in a time of 1 minute 33.579 seconds, about 8 tenths of a second quicker than its open top brother. I'm going to say that again, 8 tenths of a second faster than the NA1. That was all the gutless bastard could manage around the Top Gear Aerodrome. Here we come through Hammerhead. It's actually surprisingly planted through Hammerhead in Chicago was this car. Not gonna lie. Here we come now up to the follow through. Din lift. And as you'll see, I cut the corner. I went over the rumble strip, which is apparently a very ballsy move. Here we go through the tyres. 
96 miles per hour I caught on the speedometer, so much quicker than the old Chevrolet Vercetti. Here we come up to into the uh, penultimate turn, followed by Gambon. There it is, and across the line. But yeah, this was a very fun experience. Would do it again, most certainly. So, the NA2 Mazda MX-5, or Closed-Minded Phil, or the Gutless Bastard, depending what you want to call it. Its fastest lap was a 1 minute 9 point six three four seconds around the Lime Rock South Chicane. <sighs> trying to describe this car to you is like trying to explain how Trump and Clinton made it through as the final two runners for current US president. I will admit I did rag on this car a huge amount and I'm not prepared to deny that I didn't. But, and even though I called it a gutless bastard, which it is, it's a gutless bastard in an unusually charming way. It's like how whenever you see a load of puppies, there's always that one puppy who's doing that one stupid thing in the corner, like trying to gnaw its own ear. That's kind of sort of what the NA2 is. It's just a little puppy trying to prove that it can mess about in the big bad world. And to be perfectly honest, again, despite it being nicknamed the Gutless Bastard, it ironically shows that it does have the guts to do so. What you have to remember is that this is an NA MX-5. This is a first generation Mazda MX-5. Arguably one of the best selling sports cars on the face of the earth. Has its lack of power stopped it in all its previous incarnations, including the latest model, the ND? No. Is it going to stop it anytime soon? No. Of course it bloody isn't. That said, however, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for episode two of the We Mazda Be Crazy Championship. Tune in tomorrow where we take the NB Mazda Sport around all 11 of those tracks. So until tomorrow, thank you all so, so much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please do make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even share the video with a couple of your friends. Do whatever you want to do. I'm not your, I'm not your parents. Just, I just hope you enjoyed it. So, yeah. I don't know why, but I get a feeling that something big it's on its way. Hmm. Oh well. Until tomorrow, folks.